This is Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News bringing you the next in our series of short videos on pituitary radiology. Let's see what I have for you today. These are coronal MRI images. We're going backwards. We're in the back part of the orbits here. These are the eye muscles that control eye movement, optic nerve there and here, here. <clears throat> inside of the nose. This looks pretty odd. Here's something linear, something rounded. We're getting close to the cell. Here's the carotid siphon that I talk about finding to find out where your pituitary gland is on the images. Look at this. This is the back of the nose and the throat. Pretty round, carotid siphon here, carotid siphon here. That's a very interesting scan. Pituitary stalk, maybe some pituitary on top. Something here. Some evidence of prior surgery here. Let's try to look at the sagittal images. Unusual linear density here. This is the nasal cavity, the tongue, back of the throat. This density, mass, whatever you want to call it, is filling and enlarging the cella tersica. This is what the diaphragm cellae is. It's the, the uh, roof of the pituitary socket, if you will. You can see how flat it is. This diaphragm cellae is very intact. And whatever this is, is putting pressure to erode bone at the base of the skull here, the sphenoid bone, but it's not putting enough pressure to rip through this diaphragm cellae. couple of other things I see on this scan is you can see the lateral ventricles here and, and on the prior images were a little enlarged. Uh, this patient probably has had some brain volume loss due to aging. A little bit more than uh, I would expect given the age of the patient. This is the third ventricle, rather large. Cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius to the fourth ventricle. This is the brain stem, the medulla, the pons. This is the cerebellum. We've got this lesion here. So this could be a number of different things. The first thing one would think about would be this to maybe be a Rathke's cleft cyst, but this is very unusual. Um, Rathke's cysts often have bright fluid like this. However, this is exactly what sinus cavity mucosils look like. And uh, the surgeon took the patient to the operating room and removed this structure, which was a titanium plate used to seal off the cella and removed or evaluated this structure. And it was consistent with a mucosil. I've never in 30 years of, of seeing pituitary patients seen a mucosil in the cella. And the first thing I, I thought to ask before I even looked at the MRI was I asked my uh, nurse uh, practitioner assistant, I said, uh, did this patient have prior pituitary surgery? Because it seemed to me that would be the risk to have a mucosil in the cella. This was the titanium plate. It actually had somewhat migrated laterally into the cavernous sinus, which is not a cool thing. I'm glad we don't use those plates any longer, but it's out now. Uh, and in fact, this patient had surgery this being 19, uh, or, or 2019, uh, she had surgery in 1989 for a macro prolactinoma. Um, and then had some post-operative infection and was treated with antibiotics. The earliest MRI I could find in the system dates back to 1998. And let's take a look at that film. So here we see this lesion existed at that time. It was already in the cella. Let's look at the sagittal. 
here it is. It's already there. 21 years later, she's requiring repeat surgery for this lesion. Again, I've never seen this. Here's a here's an example of the fact that this mucosal in 10 years had grown from her sinus cavity, probably the sphenoid sinus, back into the cella where the pituitary tumor was located and then continued to, to make mucus. A mucosal is basically a bubble or a, a balloon, if you will, of mucus where the lining cells are the same ones that line the sinus cavity and they think their job is to make mucus to keep our membranes moist and attract things, etc. So it's just a self-filling mucus balloon, uh, which can obviously cause problems if the balloon gets large enough. Um, should something have been done in 1998? Uh, I don't know. You know, I wasn't involved in her care. This was a prior surgeon at the institution where she had her surgery. I don't know if the surgeon was aware of this or decided to follow this or whatever, but uh, 20 some years of follow-up, we see what it looks like today and the patient required surgery because of this growing lesion to establish its nature. And um, so this is an example of a very rare, late, 30 year later, complication of pituitary surgery is the development of a mucosal in the cella tersica. First time I've seen it, probably the last time I'll see it too. Uh, but next time I see it, if it's early, I'll know to sort of watch it or go ahead and take care of it early on and head trouble off at the pass. All right, once again, Dr. Lewis Plevins, Pituitary World News. Thank you for following us, and I hope you're finding these uh, radiology seminars interesting. We're certainly enjoying doing them, and uh, maybe we'll all be radiology uh, competent or at least able to find a pituitary and recognize some of the surrounding structures and know that this is the problem, not this, or not this lump or that lump, for example. So at any rate, have a great day.